Hello, my front porch friend. I'm so glad you could join me today because we are way in the country of Hamilton, Alabama. Now, I'm here for a reason, because of a word from the Lord that I hear for you. But before I share that word with you, can I share just a little bit of trivia? Is this not the cutest little church? It's got a pretty little cross on top of it. It's called Palmer Church or Palmer Chapel. It's named not after my dog Palmer, but probably after my people because it was all in this area. My mother was, her, she was, her maiden name is Palmer and it's down this little country road right here, way back into those woods over here is where my great, great, great grandparents raised 11 boys and one girl. So it's where the whole Palmer clan came from in this area a long time ago. Come here, I wanna show you one more thing. All right, now as you can see, the sun is bright and the wind is blowing. But out here beside this little country church is what they call Palmer Cemetery, which is where my great, great, great grandparents are buried. This is Russell Porter, and then this is his wife, and you can see this is the old original tombstone. I know you can't read it because of the, the sun, but it actually says he was born in 1818. Is that not just fascinating? And then over there, his wife, she is actually, uh, her mother, Morning Dove was her name, Morning Dove. And her mother is uh, actually not only my great-great-great-grandmother, but it's actually Elvis Presley's great-great-great-grandmother. Just a little interesting information. But that is not the reason I brought you to the cemetery. I brought you out here because for two days, I have been hearing the Lord asking you a question. And it has just been unrelenting in my mind and I knew that it was your word. This is that question. Can these bones live? I'm gonna say that again to you from the Lord. Can these bones live? Looking at your prodigal today, can your son live? Your prodigal daughter bound in sexual confusion, can your daughter live? Can your marriage live? Can it? Can your body be healed? Can your financial situation turn around? Can you ever be debt free? I hear these questions resounding in my spirit from the Lord. And let me tell you something about his questions that's, that you need to remember. God is omniscient. In other words, he knows the answer to every question. <laughs> so when he asks a question, it's not because he needs the answer. He already knows the answer. He's asking the question, not for his sake, but for yours. He's asking the question to determine what your answer will be. And believe me, sweetheart, your answer to that question is everything today. I'm going to have to sit down. I sort of made my pulpit right here on this tombstone. Is that okay to do that? I think it's okay. It's my kin folks. <laughs> so listen, here's what I've heard. Mm. The Lord is asking this question and your answer will determine, listen to me, if and when this thing in your life is going to change. Here's the reason he's asking it. Number one, because God works through faith. Always, even God works through faith himself. It's how our father, the God that we serve, this is how he operates. How do I know that? Thank you for asking. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the third verse, I want you to look at that. Hebrews 11, 3. This wind is, makes this challenging. It says, by faith, we understand. This is the New Living Translation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we see now did not come from anything that can be seen. Whoa. In other words, Everything that we see in this universe and this planet that we're sitting on right now 
was created by a God who spoke into nothing and created his will and manifested his will with the power of his word. That's through faith. Why? Because Hebrews 11.1 1 tells you what faith is. Need I remind you? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things I cannot see. I have come today to give a word to someone who's struggling for hope that this thing is ever going to change. That's why I came out to this, this place. A place that in the natural looks hopeless and dead. Because that's where you are right now in some of your life, in some of the situations you're facing. In the natural, it is completely impossible. And that's why the Lord told me to ask you these questions today. Because he has some questions to ask you. And the reason that he is asking this is because he is looking for faith. Just like he was looking for faith through the entire... In fact, if you go read the rest of Hebrews 11, if you go read the rest of the chapter, after it says that that's how God works, is speaking into nothing by faith, and then it, the rest of the chapter is filled with men and women who operated that way too and put their faith in that God and saw that when they put their faith in him and obeyed him, they saw his will manifested into impossible places. Go read the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 today again. Would you do that? I know you've read it. Read it again. Now, I want to tell you this. When God asks you a question like this today, you need to get excited. Because when he asks questions like this, can these bones live? The truth is, it indicates that he's ready to move and he's ready to do something in it. When he asks you a question like this, can your prodigal live? <laughs> you need to know, oh, something's about to happen. That's why he brought this word to you today. He's ready to move. And the reason that he is asking the question, and in your case, it's, it's pretty impossible because he's ready to resurrect something that's dead in your life. That's why he's brought me to this place to speak to you. And he's asking you the question to determine whether or not you are the person that he can actually speak through to this thing, to bring his will about. The reason the question is being asked today is because he needs to know if you are somebody that's only going to be moved by what you see in the natural. See, Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. I may have to stand up. I'm getting excited. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The Bible says, and I'm just going to paraphrase it for time's sake. You go read it. Ezekiel 37. It's, Ezekiel says, he says, I was in the spirit and the Lord carried me out into a valley. He said, and it was full of bones. And he said, I looked at these bones. And in fact, it says, and the Lord took me round about. In other words, he just walked him around the valley. He didn't just, he didn't just take a look at it from an aerial view. No, the Lord took him round about it. And they just began walking through a valley full of bones. And you go look for it yourself. He says, I looked around. I was looking around. I'm walking around it. And I'm looking at this valley. And I love this part. It says, and I looked at bones that were dry. And then he goes, no, they were very dry. I'm so glad he said they were very dry. Because he didn't just say these were bones that were dry. No. He says, in other words, just like you today, you're facing a situation that's not just impossible. It's very impossible. In the natural, your finances are very impossible. In the natural, you look at your daughter right now, and you need to do that today. I know that in your family right now, your children, your home, your marriage, maybe your relationships in your office, maybe some things going on in your office. Maybe today it's a relationship with your sibling. Maybe it's today some relationships in your family, and you're walking around, and you're looking at these things today, and you're just thinking, whoa, these circumstances in my life, they're not just dry. They are very dry. They're not just impossible. They are very impossible. And it is in that place, in a place of death and impossibility, the Lord comes to you today and he says, can these bones live? In other words, can this thing be changed? Now, everything right now is hinging on what you do with that, just like it was with Ezekiel. Because Ezekiel could have looked around and said, quote, he hears, he hears the question, can these bones live? He, in the natural, he looked around and said, nope. Nope. Lord of the natural, the, the, no. 
It's, it's impossible. And a lot of people that you work with and live with and are kin to are looking around at your life and just saying, nope, nope. Maybe it's somebody you're really close to and they're saying, you're not going to make it, we're not going to make it. Nope, nope. Can these things live? No. Came hard to get the question asked before. No. Come on, that's not who you are. I love what Ezekiel said. <laughs> he says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel didn't say no. He proved instantly, I'm not a man that looks in the natural. And I love this because he also proved he wasn't a man of a like exploding faith. He didn't look at that and say, God says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel didn't go, yes, they can live. Ezekiel just looked at it and went, you alone know. There's some things in our life I don't have the answer for. But I'm not going to say no. And I'm not going to say it can't be done. I'm going to look up and say, you know. Now, there's faith in that. And Jesus didn't say you had to have a whole bunch of faith to move a mountain. He said, I just need a little bitty. I just need a little grain. I just need the size of a mustard seed of faith. I just, just give me something to work with. God is saying to you today, just give me something to work with because he cannot work through doubt. God will never work through fear and God will never work through doubt. In fact, the Bible says again in Hebrews 11, without faith, it is impossible possible to please him for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him oh you got to get this answer right today sweetheart you got to answer right can these bones live either say exploding yes because you know that you've heard from God and even today if you're kind of going I don't know how then just at least answer you know but don't answer like you know answer like you know and the next words out of God's mouth when Ezekiel says, you alone know, God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, I will make breath enter into you and you will live. Oh, and then Ezekiel says, and so I prophesied. <laughs> and so Ezekiel, whoa, see, that's all God was looking for. God just needed somebody to speak through and he knew he couldn't speak through a person of doubt. And sweetheart, if this is going to take, when you're co-laboring with God's will in the earth, when you know you've got God's will, you can look at your situation. First of all, determine God's will about it. Once you get that determined, then you open your mouth and you start prophesying. So God shows Ezekiel the problem and then he gives Ezekiel the word. That's what he's doing today. You're looking at the problem and now he's giving you the word. And he, hear, he says, I'm going to tell you, Ezekiel, open your mouth and speak to it, Ezekiel. And here's what you say. That's what God's going to do for you today. Open your mouth and speak to this thing. And here's what to say. So God gave Ezekiel, you say to that thing, I will make breath enter into you. You tell these bones and you will live. And, and Ezekiel said, as soon as I begin to prophesy, whoo, I started hearing a rattling. Ezekiel looks around. Whoa. See, if he'd have done it in the flesh, those bones would have stayed dry for eternity. But no, we're not in the flesh. When God's with you, changes everything. God was in his words. And when God was in his words. It wasn't just Ezekiel's breath. It wasn't just God's. It wasn't just Ezekiel's word. Ezekiel spoke to it. Whoa, the bones start moving and the bones start rattling and everything starts coming together. All of a sudden, whoa, bones start connecting. Bones start, something's happening. Something's happening. And then all of a sudden he looks and the bones are connected, but there's still no life in it. It's still not a finished work. And so God speaks to Ezekiel again. Ezekiel, prophesy again. And now this time, Ezekiel, I need you to speak to the wind. <laughs> speak to the wind and tell the wind to come into these bones. Speak to these winds and speak to these winds to give these bones life. It reminds me of, 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 of Genesis around what is it? The second chapter. And, and the Bible says that in God, the breath of God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. Come on. It's the breath of God that gives life. And it's the breath of God out of your mouth that's going to give life to this thing that looks dead today in the natural. And so Ezekiel said, and so I prophesied again. Come on, you got to prophesy again. You got to speak to this thing. You look today at your prodigal. Because here's what, let me say this first. Ezekiel, first of all, he prophesied to the bones. He prophesied to the impossibility. And the second thing was he prophesied to the wind. In other words, he called on the spirit of God. 
He was doing what God told him to do, but he was co-laboring with God. He spoke to the situation, and then he spoke to the Spirit, to the wind of God. That's all God needs is a conduit of faith. He just needs somebody from that he can get his will from heaven through them, through faith, into the earth. And so, oh, and the Bible says, Ezekiel prophesied, and he, first to the bones, second to the wind. Wind come! And then that, that army, that those bones stood up, and they stood up as an exceeding great army. Whoa. And this is fascinating. It, go, go read after the bones had risen up. At, in, in Ezekiel 37, the Bible says that God says, Ezekiel, these bones represent the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel is saying that they are just dry bones. And it says, because we have lost all hope. Our nation is hopeless. And so what did God do? He spoke to their hopelessness through a man, through an intercessor, somebody that could speak life back into them again. See, right now, there's our nation feels hopeless. People in your office are speaking all negative. There's no hope for America. There's no hope for the whatever nation you're watching this from. This world just looks hopeless. No, God's just looking for an Ezekiel today. He's looking for somebody that can, I believe this word today is for you to speak directly into your situation, your life, into your prodigal, into your marriage, into your body for healing. Come on, the, the healing of a person you love like a child or a grandchild that needs healing. You, God's got to get somebody to speak through. He's somebody that's got faith to believe God's greater than that situation. That his word is stronger than their bondage. Somebody's got to believe that. Are you that person? And you speak his word. So you speak to the situation and you call on the spirit of God to speak through you life into that thing. And I believe today God's calling you to speak to the things directly in your family, in your office, in your church, and also in your city and in your nation. I'm telling you, Front Porch friends, God's not just wanting you to speak just to think small. He's wanting, he needs some intercessors for a nation. God's telling me today to, to, to tell you in Jesus' name, to speak into your prodigal today and you start in the spirit realm. Even He may be at school. He lives somewhere else. It doesn't matter where they live. It doesn't matter where they are. You need to speak to those bones of your loved one and just begin to prophesy. Walk around your house like Ezekiel was in that valley. And you just start walking through your house saying, in Jesus' name, I speak the breath of God into you. I declare the Spirit of God is coming into you, my son, and you will live. I declare the Spirit of God is coming into my daughter, and you will live, and you will not die, and you will declare the works of the Lord. I declare into my body, you will live, and you will not die. I declare healing into my sinuses, healing, whatever healing you need in your body body. Well, speak to your finances and declare in my finances, you will live and you will not die. The Lord will provide. Come on. It doesn't matter what it is into your marriage. My marriage will live. I speak life. God is saying, can these bones live? Oh, sweet front porch friend, answer him today. Answer him and do whatever he tells you to do and say whatever he tells you to say. But heaven's sakes, don't speak doubt. Don't look at the natural and, and speak what you see. You look at it, you're looking at it, it's dry, it's dead, it's hopeless. But that's not what we're moved by. We're moved only by the word he tells us to speak and prophesy. And if you got to, prophesy again and again. And you never move. I believe the Lord today brought me this word because he's ready to resurrect some dead things in your life. He just needs somebody to get through. That's you. Lord, I pray today you will let faith rise up in my sweet front porch friend. I pray that today she or he will stand beside Ezekiel and prophesy to the dry bones in their family, in their office, in their, their relationships for their family. They will, they will speak to the dry bones of things in their life that look dead and hopeless and impossible, very impossible. And today, in Jesus' name, we speak breath of God come into their family, into their child. Breath of God come. And I declare in Jesus' name, you will live. I speak to you, front porch friend. I declare you will live. I declare your prodigal will live. I declare your marriage will live in Jesus' name. Agree with me, sweetheart. I decree in Jesus' name financial breakthrough.
And you and I agree together for our nation, whatever nation you're watching this from, for your nation. We declare over this nation today, just like he's prophesied for the nation of Israel. We declare in Jesus' name to an impossibility. Lord, I declare that the dry bones of America will live. We will see a great awakening. We declare over our cities you will live and not die. And the Lord will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, sweetheart. Thank you for coming out to this place with me. I believe we're about to see resurrection. Comment below and say this. You know, in the natural, you could say to your friends and family, you see dry bones, but I see a miracle. Come on. Comment that. Say, you see dry bones, but I see a healing. You see dry bones, but I see deliverance. You see dry bones, but I see my son. You see dry bones, but I see my daughter resurrected. You see dry bones, but I see a city in revival. Come on, will you do that? You see dry bones, but I see America transformed by the power of God. Comment and let me hear from you. I love you, sweet friend. It's getting hot out here. I love you so much. And I'll see you again next week. Till then.